Funding for FAIR 2015 is brought to you by Friends, the Iowa Public Television Foundation. Mid-American Energy Company and its Energy Advantage program are dedicated to increasing the awareness of energy efficiency in Iowa's homes and businesses. Information is at midamericanenergy.com. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Iowa Community Foundations, an Iowa Council of Foundations initiative. Giving through local community foundations is rewarding in more ways than one. Details about the Endow Iowa Tax Credit Program are at iowacommunityfoundations.org. The Iowa Lottery. Since 1985, proceeds from the Iowa Lottery, totaling more than $1.6 billion, have helped make Iowa a better place to live, work, and raise a family. More information is available at ialottery.com. Through more than 100 years of changing times, EMC Insurance has been committed to the promise it makes to its employees, customers, agents, and communities. Count on EMC. Iowa Public Television presents Fair 2015. Here is your host, Bill Riley. Hello and welcome. We're so excited to bring you even more adventures from the great Iowa State Fair. In tonight's hour of highlights, you'll see some time-honored traditions as well as some fascinating Fair 2015 favorites. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Tonight, we'll showcase unique art sculpted with a loud stroke. We'll have the honor of meeting the state's candidates for the Iowa State Fair Queen, along with the new queen herself. And we'll peek in on the auction for the governor's charity steer show. This program is packed with loads of entertainment, so let's get right to it. Every year, we ask Iowa Public Television's Paul Yeager to scope out the butter cooler to see what Sarah Pratt is up to. Here he is now. We all know that the line to see the butter cow is long. It's always one of the most popular spots at the Iowa State Fair. But throw in the possibility that maybe a presidential candidate is coming to see or another celebrity, it just intensifies the crowd along Sarah Pratt's creation. And you know, in her 10th year, she likes to combine tradition with something new. And this year is no different. Is it hard to believe that you've done 10 of these? It is hard to believe. It's, it's gone by fast in some ways, and other ways I, I appreciate the experience and the routine of it now. What is this year's cow? She's an Ayrshire this year. Why? Well, I, I do prefer the Jersey. That's my favorite breed, and so I've um, tried to throw in some different breeds here and there, but um, just to challenge myself a little bit, I guess. So what are you doing right there? I'm just, um, there's a tendon right here that comes from the jaw back, from the front of the jaw to the back of the jaw. So I'm just giving a little bit more definition there to that. So, um, so people out there can see it because here I can see it. It's just so different. The lighting from this angle compared to two feet below, the way the light hits it is completely different. You and Easton really went to town smoothing that. Oh <laughs> You've got the family helping. I do. Um, I started when I was 13, and my daughters are starting sixth grade this year. They're 11. That would have been the age Norma would have let her grandkids start helping. Can you guys smell that the butter is old butter? You give tours. You take time to bring people in. Why is that important? I enjoy sharing the tradition of the butter cow, and I feel like it was a gift for me as a young 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 adult to be able to come in and learn the trade and see what it's all about. And um, I want to pass that on to friends and family, but also I've been able to go to schools and um, talk to groups of kids about sculpting and believing in themselves and, you know, saying yes mm -hmm. and, and not being afraid to fail. So, I don't want, you know what? I do have butter on my ham sandwich today, but not from the, but not from this butter. Yeah. I use the butter at home. Do you want to wait? Eat it. Yay! I was so close to saying no. My dad said, what's the worst you could do? Just call it Picasso. if it looks all wonky. 
<laughs> that was the first year. And I, you know, kind of laughed and then said, you know, it's a good perspective. If you don't try, you've already failed. This year's companion sculpture is? Monopoly. It's the 80th anniversary of the game as, as we know it. I think that as people walk by this year and look at the Monopoly, they'll remember all those funny stories and share them again and um, hopefully be able to walk by and say, oh, the dog, I always wanted the dog, or, you know. We have the game pieces mm -hmm. and the board. What else? Um, the display here around um, Mr. Pennybags is going to have bags of money and properties and houses and just kind of, you know, all the iconic pieces of the game along with the game pieces. Creating art with a large, dangerous power tool is always fascinating to fairgoers. It's chainsaw sculpting. <laughs> I've been carving for a living for like 35 years, and I'm, I'm officially retired now, but I still do some fairs, you know, they're just too darn much fun. Gary and I together have been doing this for four, maybe five years now, and then of course I was the very first chainsaw artist here back in the early 90s. The roar of the saw helps attract people. It's a unique combination of the lumberjack aspect with art. It's a good attraction at a fair because of the speed. Generally, at a piece we're practiced with, we can produce it with the chainsaw in under an hour. Several people tell us that it's their favorite thing to see at the fair, because it is different. And uh, for AJ and I, it's relatively easy to sculpt, uh, but some people don't see how it's possible to envision that subject within a log and make it appear. It's all just getting used to the tool and being able to do what you really want with it. That's pretty much it. I've had people come up and say, man, you are so patient. And I have to go, no, I'm not. I'm impatient. That's why I use a chainsaw. I want to get this project done. All wood carvers are thieves. We steal ideas. <laughs> Any place we can get them, you know. You know, 11 day long fair, it gets kind of grueling, especially when you got to crank out about 40 pieces all different. A lot of times it comes from something you saw another carver do and you go, oh, I can do that only just, I'll do this to it and make it a little better. So you, you have to think in terms of what do most people want or what would they like, you know, and. Wildlife is kind of a universal theme there where everybody can identify, you know, to the squirrel that they keep chasing out of the bird feeder or the, you know, the bear comes and raids it every once in a while. People love animals, so pretty hard to lose there. For me, I have to have some kind of a plan so it fits the log well, and we want to choose things that will auction well. Don't just want to carve a squid, you know, it, even if I wanted to carve that, it won't auction well, not too likely. So we want the fair to make money on the carvings. It's one of the top goals. That's why I've carved pieces like the hummingbird on a flower or the two lovebirds on top of the word love. And then the money that's generated is handed to the Blue Ribbon Foundation and they use that for improvements on the fairground. So it's enthusiasm, it's the people, it's the people's support, and all that working together that makes the Iowa State Fair what it really is. Thank you. Come along as we meet an FFA student who restored an antique tractor for the fair, this one with a very special purpose in mind. I think Jared's story is very inspiring. Um, He's, he's gone through a lot for only being 17 years old, and he is one of the most um, mature, responsible, likable students I've ever had. Jared Kelly, a senior from Winthrop, has been restoring a tractor in memory of his dad. Gerald Kelly was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in 2009 and lost his battle with the disease in 2014. My uh, tractor is a 1972 International 656. 
It holds special meaning to me because my d dad always wanted to help me do one. The restoration is Jared's summer FFA project. His community came together to help make it happen. The tractor was purchased for him and people have volunteered their time, the space to work on the tractor, and much more to help Jared get the project done. It is a tremendous amount of support that the community has given us. Um, Jared's dad was diagnosed with cancer in 2009 and it was something that he always wanted to do was restore a tractor with Jared. So the fact that they took that and made that dream come true, that just really warmed my heart and just really made me realize what an awesome community that we live in. I'd really like to thank everybody for all the help that they've done to help me out with this project. Jared has been involved in FFA since he was a freshman. He has learned a lot from being a part of the organization. I really like to be in FFA because of all the opportunities you get to have with the livestock and just meeting new friends and new people and new ways to do things and stuff like that. FFA really makes a positive difference in the lives of of its members and the lives of the students that participate in it and those those workplace skills that can be transferred regardless if you're involved with agriculture or anything else um, skills of leadership and responsibility working together those are all things that FFA teaches young people. Jared has spent many hours on his tractor restoration and was thrilled to show the finished product at his county fair. It shows uh, my accomplishment of what I've done and uh, all the hard work that it pays off to do. And it take, even though it takes time, it pays off at the end. In the, end. the tractor will be exhibited at this year's Iowa State Fair as well. No matter how it does, the Kelly family is glad to have had the opportunity to restore it. And they know Jared's dad would be happy about it too. The story, you know, in memory of his dad and the community coming together to do this for him is, is very inspiring and, and very special and unique. It was something that he always wanted to do and he would be very proud just as I am as of everything that Jared has been able to do that he has been able to carry on a tradition of loving those red tractors and being able to do something. I would have meant a lot to him. He would have really enjoyed it. Dan Wardell and Robots go together like peanut butter and jelly, so it's no wonder he wanted to meet Oscar the Robot at the fair this year. As you travel around the Iowa State Fair, you might run into political candidates, traveling royalty, larger-than-life celebrities, or you might run into a character a lot more awesome, like a robot. Do you mean me? No, not you, Dan Bot. I'm talking about Oscar the Robot. Oh. <laughs> So I'm here with Drew and Dad. Dad, you just beat Oscar in a race. Tell us, what was the secret to your success? Oscar's not very fast. Oscar, I've waited forever to meet you. Are you really real? I am. I am a real robot. Are you a real person? Well, I'm here with my great friend Emma. Emma, have you ever seen a robot before at the Iowa State Fair? No. Does that make it the best Iowa State Fair ever? Yes. I want to be a John Deere tractor when I grow up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Dan Butt. How are you, Dan Butt? I'm doing great. You look very nice, Dan Butt. Have you been at the fair long today? I, I love that fair, fair, Oscar. Cool. Have you been able to get any food out here at the fair, Dan Butt? No, indigestion. No, no, that's only if you eat it too fast. Remember, we robots don't eat corn dogs, we eat the cooking oil. I've been doing it wrong all these years. How many batteries do you go through in a day? Well, from here at the fair, let's see. I have been through one battery, two. I have two batteries. One is always charging when the other is being used. How many batteries do you go through? That is very cheap, only one per day. 
You are an amazing robot, Oscar. I hope to someday be like you. Oh, that's easy to do that. All you have to do is love people and be a friend like all of these boys and girls around out here. Oscar, can we be friends? I would love to be your friend. Can I have a hug? Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Hey, Dad, you're not jealous, are you? All right, Mom, we just saw you hug Oscar. Tell us about that experience. It was pretty cool giving a robot a hug. Has that ever happened to you before? No. Only at the Iowa State Fair, folks. Well, that's a really good selfie. I like that very nice. So let me ask you this. If you had a robot like Oscar in your very own house, what would you make it do? Mm, cook me dinner. Help people that need help around the world. Whoa, yeah, that, that's a good one. If you had a robot like that of your own, what chore would you make him do? Clean my bedroom and do the dishes. You're in for a long day, Oscar. We're having a condo right here at the fair, boys and girls. Very nice, very nice. I'm not going to put the lighting at the top of my eyes, this way again. Eggs are fragile and delicate, so why not toss them around and race with them in a fun event at the Animal Learning Center? Here we are at the Knapp Animal Learning Center, and we're here for a big competition, the Egg Toss. The Egg Toss competition, we take a few kids out of our audience, we split them into, two, into a couple different teams of two, and then we start them at a small distance, and they start tossing an egg back and forth. Start tossing. And we gradually move them back, so it's your classic egg toss competition. They are not hard boiled, so it could get pretty messy. Do you throw eggs a lot at home? No, we don't Not throw really. eggs, but we usually throw the ball. That's normally a more appropriate thing to throw, yes. Yeah. Um, and so, do you have confidence that you're gonna do great? No. Oh, come on, ladies. Somewhat not, Thank really. you, Addison. <laughs> Who is most likely to drop it? No, okay, you admit it. And who is most likely to throw it too hard? <laughs> nice. You're going to get one egg for a team. You will then begin tossing your egg. Just like it because it's kind of messy, it's kind of fun, it's kind of risky, so they really like that. I like to tell them that instead of just trying to catch the egg, to kind of cradle it to your body and kind of sink with it. We start with four pallets of about 30, 36 eggs. So we go through quite a few of them. It's kind of fun to be able to interact with the kids, you know, get them excited about agriculture, get them excited about um, learning where their food comes from. We'll do a couple rounds here and then we'll take a final round of all our winners. Are you guys sisters? Sister teams are good. All right, what's your name? Abby. Where are you from? Missouri. Oh, so you're at an Iowa State Fair. You're from Missouri. That's pretty cool. All right, what's your name? Megan. And where are you from? Missouri. Are you guys sisters? No. Okay, best friends? Yeah. That's cool. All right, take a step back. Kind of a high one. Oh, okay. How does it feel? to be the Missouri representative at the egg toss at the Iowa State Fair. Feels pretty, pretty good, good. Yeah. yeah. And champions, big deal? Is yeah. it a lifelong dream for you? Yes, sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually a chicken farmer, so. Oh I'm my gosh. Yeah, this is a lifelong dream. So this was not the first egg you've ever had to handle? No. So you kind of are a professional. Is that allowed? I'm not sure. <laughs> are you a ringer of some sort? All right, we're fine. <laughs> so, so had you practiced before this? No. So what did you think when in the finals she told you to do it with an arch? Was that kind of intimidating? Kind of. Yeah, you could of. take it. We play softball together, so we're yeah. kind of used to the Oh, again, yeah. with the experience. Yeah. I like it. The softball, a little less hard to break. Yeah. And you guys enjoy the rest of your day at the Iowa State Fair. Every year, I'm honored to be a part of the State Fair Queen Coronation. Meet the wonderful girls who grace the Riley stage during this year's ceremony. All right, the time has come for the introduction of our 101 county queens with a combined grade point average of 3.62. 
From Adair County, I am Shelby Soper. From Adams County, I'm Nicole Basher. From Elmakey County, I'm Emily Rose Hamill. From Appanese County, I'm Kendra Siebel. From Audubon County, I'm Tess Albright. From Benton County, I'm Sarah Kreitner. From Blackhawk County, I'm Jen Swall. From the National Cattle Congress, I'm Jessica Cox. From Boone County, I'm Emma Whalen. From Bremer County, I'm Haley Schmitz. From Buchanan County, I'm Emily Martins. From Buena Vista County, I'm Carly Graw. From Butler County, I'm Caitlin Allen. From Calhoun County, I'm Rayanne Hanlon. Carroll County, I'm Jory Esslinger. From Cass County, I'm Melissa Dean. From Cedar County, I'm Maddie Timmerman. From Saragorda County, I'm Allison O'Connor. From Cherokee County, I'm Brooklyn Trinan. From Chickasaw County, I'm Erica Franz and Ackerman. From Clark County, I am Carter Cooley. From Clay County, I'm Cassie Day. From Clayton County, I'm Abby Von Hondorf. From Clayton County, I'm Grace Adams. From Crawford County, I am Katherine Wally. From Dallas County, I am Emily Harney. From Davis County, I'm Blair Bodkins. From Decatur County, I'm Monica Irving. From Delaware County, I'm Andrew Wilson. From Des Moines County, I'm Andrea Larson. From Dickinson County, I'm Grace Goring. From Emmett County, Elizabeth Boyer. From Fayette County, I'm Mary Scott. From Floyd County, Jenna Grover. From Franklin County, I'm Lauren Dirksen. Representing Fremont County, I am Kaylee Severn. From the Great Jones County Fair, I'm Ellen Schlarman. From Greene County, I am Abby Badger. From Grandy County, Ashley Moore. From Guthrie County, I'm Lauren Hansen. From Hamilton County, I'm Lillian Chamness. From Hancock County, I'm Emma Chizik. From Hardin County, I'm Victoria Butt. From Harrison County, my name is Faith Spencer. From Henry County, I'm Grace Edwards. From the mighty Howard County Fair, I am Abby Kennan. From Humboldt County, I'm Haley Davis. From Ida County, Megan Weiss. From Iowa County, I'm Kayla Coomley. From Jackson County, I'm Katie Soliday. From Jasper County, I'm JC Reeves. From Jefferson County, I'm Whitney Horace. From Johnson County, I'm Megan Schnevelin. From Keokuk County Expo, I'm Paige Batesel. From Keokuk County Fair, I'm Lydia Green. From Kasuth County, I'm Star Haler. From Lee County, I'm Rachel Maymert. From Lynn County, I am Sierra Doherty. From Louisa County, I'm Courtney Orr. From Lucas County, I am Mackenzie Welch. From Lyon County, I'm Ashley DeBoer. From Madison County, I'm Shelby Dunbar. From Mahassa County, I'm Madison Stewart. From Marion County, I am Kylie Elder. From Marshall County, I'm Shelby Sly. From Mills County, I'm Chrissy Vinton. From Mitchell County, Emma Williams. From Monona County, I'm Alexa Lloyd. From Monroe County, I'm Sarah Ruby Clark. From Montgomery County, I'm Isabel Perkins. From Muscatine County, my name is Elise Spicy. From O'Brien County, I'm Jenna Heemstra. From Osceola County, I'm Haley Wilmers. From Page County, I'm Kaisa McLarnon. From Palo Alto County, I'm Cassie Olson. From Plymouth County, I'm Christina Sturman. From Pocahontas County, I am Madison Gardewine. From Polk County, I'm Allison Vincent. From Pottawatomie County, I'm Taylor Applegate. From Powersheet County, Caitlin Graham. From Ringgold County, I am JC Heitzig. From Sack County, I'm Hannah Fillmeyer. From Scott County, I'm Brianna Riley. From Sioux County, Iowa, I'm Katie Deweird. From Story County, I'm Lydia Heidloff. From Tama County, I am Aubrey Bacon. From Taylor County, I'm Melissa Kuhn. From Union County, I am Madison Scarta. Representing Van Buren County, I'm Grace Westergamp. 
From Wapolo County, I'm Elizabeth Sloan. From Warren County, my name is Emily Jensen. From Washington County, I'm Zoe Wagner. From Wayne County, I'm Mandy Gassman. From Webster County, I'm Karen Dawson. From West Pottawatomie County, I'm Alexa Murphy. From Winnebago County, I'm Rebecca Murray. From Winnesheet County, I'm Ashley Kurash. From Woodbury County, I'm Haley Clayton. From Worth County, I'm Kaylee Eskildson. From Wright County, I'm Sydney Redding. From the Wyoming Fair Association, I'm Maddie Markman. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2015 Iowa State Fair Queen hails from Great Jones County, Ellen Schlarman. From the Great Jones County Fair, let's give her another round of applause, your queen for 2015, Ellen Schlarman. One of the biggest events at the Iowa State Fair and a time-honored tradition is the crowning of the Iowa State Fair Queen. And we're very fortunate to be standing with the 2015 Queen, Ellen Schlarman from Great Jones County. Ellen, thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy schedule. We're honored to be with you. Tell us a little bit about the excitement when your name was called as Queen. I was definitely very excited. I couldn't believe it at the moment. I just, once I heard Great Jones, I just stood up and I just started bawling. It was just an amazing feeling and I'm super excited. Well, we're proud to have you as our queen. And tell us a little bit about your family. So my mom is Sue and my dad is Dave and they've been together for 21 years. And I have a younger sister, Emily, who is 13 and another younger sister, Annie, who is nine. And we are such a close family. We do everything together. That's wonderful. Where are you at in school and what are your future plans? I will be a senior at Monticello High School this year and my future plans are to attend Iowa State University and I plan on majoring in business administration and minoring in marketing. Fantastic. Go Cyclones. This is Bill Riley with the 2015 Iowa State Fair Queen Ellen Schlarman. From musical talents to kitchen know-how and flat-out bravery, competitions at the State Fair are fun for everyone. Here are a few of this year's contest results. Wow, the first half of that show just zoomed by. But we have plenty of more delightful highlights coming up. We'll drop in on fairgoers taking the time to take in the national anthem every day. We'll check in on the governor's charity steer show action. And we'll see the fair like we've never seen it before in slow motion. But first, because we live in this digital world, we want to make sure that you've checked out Iowa Public Television's webpage, and we encourage you to take part in our conversations on social media. We're also very proud of our programming here at Iowa Public Television, so check out these important messages and meet me back here in a couple minutes for more fair fun only on Iowa Public Television. This year, Iowa Public Television celebrates 45 years of Iowa State Fair coverage by bringing you more ways to get involved. Follow us on Twitter for up-to-the-minute updates on fair coverage. Find us on Facebook for behind-the-scenes tidbits. Tag your fair photos with hashtag IPTVFairPhoto. And visit IPTV.org to watch videos and connect with all the resources IPTV has to offer. Whatever way, be sure to join us for all the Iowa State Fair fun. Join the conversation online with Iowa Public Television. Follow us on Twitter. Connect with us on all our social networks. 
Visit Iowa Public Television's new interactive exhibit in the Varied Industries Building at the Iowa State Fair. Meet Dan Wardell daily from noon to 1 p.m. See the Cat in the Hat weekdays from 1 to 8 p.m., weekends from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Downton Abbey and Doctor Who fans, we have photo ops for you, too. Stop by to enter daily drawings, get a temporary tattoo, or just tell us about your favorite IPTV program. We'll see you at the fair. There once was a game played by ordinary girls that captured the hearts of an entire state. Girls six on six basketball, a beacon of the uniqueness of the Iowa girl, more than a game. Eight o'clock Thursday night on Iowa Public Television. Be a part of IPTV's state fair coverage this year by sharing your favorite pictures with us. Just tag your photos on social media with hashtag IPTV Fair Photo. We'll include our favorites online and at our nightly fair highlights show. Talent competition on the Riley stage was red hot today. Here are the young Iowans who advanced. great group of performers. Just a reminder that on Sunday, August 23rd at 8 p.m., be sure to watch us here on Iowa Public Television for the Talent Championships. Man, am I excited. Hey, welcome back, everyone. We've got a tremendous second half of our show coming up. If you've ever been out to the fair in the morning, you may have witnessed how the daily singing of the national anthem gives pause to even the busiest of fairgoers. It's a tradition that we've started. The Osage and You Sing event is put on by the Des Moines Register. Each year they ask for contestants to submit videos of them singing the national anthem and they're voted on by the public. The top 11 winners get to sing it on the roof of the administration building at 10 o'clock. The national anthem is broadcast throughout the entire fairgrounds on all the speakers. People love it, and it's important to start each day of the fair in such a positive way. What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming. It's open to anybody. It's mostly Iowans, but anybody can participate. It's a big honor. I mean, I've loved singing for a long time, and so to be able to do it on this big of a scale is really awesome. I'm 13 years old. I turn 14 in October. I'm from Shenandoah, and it's about two and a half to three hours from here, but my family stays for the whole time, so I've been camping here every year since I was born. The national anthem to me means that it's honoring like the veterans who have fought for our freedom and that we're a country that actually is free. The fairgrounds comes to a halt during the national anthem, and it's very moving. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through 
hey, we all know Paul Yeager has a sweet tooth, so we sent him to meet some other folks with the same sweet dreams. You know, one of the great things on the Iowa, hold on. One of the great things at the Iowa State Fair is, you know, foods to eat. And when I was told to do a story about desserts at the fair, I said, okay, if I have to, I, I guess sometimes you just have to take one for the team. So we asked you, what's your favorite dessert at the Iowa State Fair? I like the deep fried Snickers. Uh, you got to make sure you hit up the dairy barn. Got to get some ice cream. I like caramel apples. Ice cream. My kids every day have to have junior donuts. And I have three kids, so probably twice a day. Do you always get ice cream at the fair? Yes, actually I do. I always get ice cream at the fair because it's so hot. It helps cool me off. I just like all of it. We got a whole bucket of cookies. Deep fried Oreos. Why? Because they're delicious. <laughs> but what do you, are you willing to try fried ice cream to, to yeah. expand your dessert palate? Yeah. Take another bite. Okay. No? No. <laughs> Why not? It tastes weird. Final cakes are yummy, final cakes are delicious, but are they nutritious, Jane? Oh, good question. You don't need to answer that question, of course well, not. Well, you know, they, they delicious. always- delicious, that's all that matters. They always say that there's no calories at the fair. So you walk out that front gate. <laughs> so are you a, uh, I get a funnel cake every time you come to the fair kind of a gal? I love funnel cake, but I want to share it because it's too much for me to eat by myself. So do you want Steve to share that with you? Or? Would you like to share with me? <laughs> Someone just gave me a bacon maple covered holy goodness cake. You want to try this with me? Ooh, yes. I would love that. All right, I'm going to have your, I'm, can you hold that yeah, for I us? Am. And let's find out what this is like. Ready? Stupid. Here we go. Maple leaf, that is good. <laughs> <laughs> that is what? Maple leaf and good. Anybody else want a bite? Just take your fingers. We're all friends here at the fair, aren't we? What do you have? The peppermint ice cream bar. That's the best. <laughs> it is it? the best. It's amazing. What is so good about it? It's the peppermint and the Oreo cookie. <laughs> and the sh and don't forget the chocolate. That's with the right. Oreo that's cookie. right. The fudge in the middle. <laughs> All right, Katie, you are someone who only comes to the fair once. You try to fit it all in. What are you trying this year? This year I'm doing this chocolate chip cookie dough on a stick. We're doing this before dinner tonight. <laughs> all right, give it a shot. Mm. Wow. No, that is good. That was worth every calorie, let me tell you. Many things at the fair just happen way too fast. So we sent our cameras out to capture some iconic fair images in slow motion. Ever feel like there is so much going on at the Iowa State Fair that you may be missing it all? Well, let's slow the fair down from food to adventure, down to a pace where we can enjoy even the smallest of details. A grinder stand that serves more than 1,000 pounds of sausage in the first weekend alone. A corn stand, leaving no kernel behind. and a cheese curd haven, taking the gooey to golden brown. For the power tool advocates, there are plenty of chainsaws tearing artfully into wood.
and only a slow motion sky glider right away, slicing into a giant block of ice. But nothing compares to the majesty of horses, guns, and exploding balloons. Even the tiniest details at the Iowa State Fair can stand out as long as you slow down long enough to pay attention. Hey, have you seen any of those dynamic decorated concrete horses at the fairgrounds? Let's find out all about them. I've entered every year that they've offered the contest, which this year is our fifth one. Um, it started four years ago with the butter cow. It was the 100th anniversary. The State Fair was celebrating the 100th anniversary of the butter cows. And I think their goal was maybe just to do it that first year and get 100 cows. Um, it was very popular and artists really enjoyed it, so I think they just continued. These horses are made out of concrete. I've been doing concrete statues since I was a teenager, and this is the only thing I've ever really done. Concrete is rock, sand, water, and cement powder. Once the mold is set and ready to go, then the concrete can be poured in. So with the horse, you're pouring it upside down, and so you're pouring in through the back legs, and it's running down the back side of the statue, across his back, down the neck, towards the ears and the eyes and the nose. And the consistency of the concrete is so important. Once the concrete statue has set for 24 hours, we simply tip it down, stand it up, take all the bolts off of the fiberglass housing, pull all the pieces of fiberglass off, uh, then, then peel the rubber off of the statue. As good as Kevin is and as good as we are, there's gonna be minor flaws in it. And so we'll take a patching compound, we'll smooth off any flaws that are on the statue, and it's ready to go, ready to be painted. Painting on the concrete sculptures is different in that um, you really gotta, the piece has to speak to you. Uh, when I work on a canvas piece, You've got a square canvas. It's flat. You, you lay the, the dimensions down on it. Um, this is already a dimensional object, so you kind of have to work with the shape of it. And this year is actually, the horse is going to be a little bit of a challenge. I, d I don't particularly want to paint this I, the horse to look like a horse. I'm going to really try to utilize the legs and the body shape of the horse to incorporate elements into my design. I've done it five years, now this is the fifth one. I enter in the professional division, and the first year I, I just paid the entry fee. I just wanted to do it. Um, since then, because it was successful and there's been a lot of interest here in our community about it, I've had somebody willingly jump forward and sponsor my sculpture each year. Um, so now the different ones I've done over the last four or five years now um, are housed somewhere with my sponsor here in Marshalltown. Last year, my sponsor was the cabinet shop in Marshalltown, <laughs> and I chose to just depict a, a very Iowa corn and barn scene um, on one side, and then on the other side, it was a still life. I'm a Cezanne fan, so I very much Cezanne style uh, with that particular painting, and I got first place again, so I was very excited about that. And I absolutely love seeing all the other artists' pieces. One of the best nights for me at the State Fair is the Wednesday night kickoff, the kind of sneak peek. It's a great night to go and we walk around and find everybody's sculpture and I would have never expected to develop like the kinds of friendships out of it that, that I have.
With proceeds going to charity, the Governor's Charity Steer Show makes a big difference in Iowa's communities. Let's check it out. Is our owner, Governor Terry Brandstad. I'm a very competitive person, and you know, we want to win every year. So how many the Lieutenant months? Governor beat me last year. So. This is my fourth year, so uh, re returning champion from last year. Welcome to the 33rd edition of the Governor's Charity Steer Show. This is one of the premier charity events at the Iowa State Fair, where a star-studded cast competes for the blue ribbon and the right to say they were selected as the best of the best. Well, I tell you, I know Hayden is looking forward to overall, and I think he's got one here. You guys have had experience with the Ronald McDonald House, haven't you? I was diagnosed with cancer when I was eight years old, and my father stayed there about 70 nights. For more than three decades, the Iowa Beef Industry Council and the Iowa Cattlemen's Association have held this celebrity event and raised more than two and a half million dollars for the Des Moines, Iowa City, and Sioux City Ronald McDonald House charities. Each Ronald McDonald House provides a home away from home for families of seriously ill children being treated in nearby hospitals. While the celebrities take center stage, the students who raised these animals are some of the stars of the event. Several have earned top honors at their county fairs and have been selected to participate with a celebrity exhibitor at this annual event. Let's check in with judges Beth and Jean Doran. We're going to look for a steer that's sound on his feet and legs. We want him to have muscle. We want him to have some cover and some finish so he eats well. Being named champion may be at the top of everyone's list, but awards for showmanship and people's choice are given to two of the celebrities participating in today's event. There's our people's choice award right here. Your showman. Some of you have a lot of experience maybe on the end of a halter. Some of you are brand new to doing that. And it takes a lot of courage to manhandle one around that's going to be anywhere from 12 to 1,450 some pounds. With that, it's been our honor. I appreciate the opportunity to work uh, with these exhibitors here today. With that, we're going to go out. He and I are going to select our grand champion for in your governor's steer show today. Congratulations to all of you. This is great. It's a testament to the great ag programs that uh, Des Moines Area Community College has, but mostly to Senator Jack Kibbe. He created our system 50 years ago. That's why we named this here Kibbe 5-0. I mean, this is a testament to the greatest community college system in the country. And as I always say, I never say DMAX the best, but there's nobody any better. Wow, that's something else, ain't it? That's, that's like winning a statewide election. <laughs> Our beloved Iowa State Fair is huge and amazing, and we can't possibly see it all with our TV cameras, so we're excited to share photos you've hashtagged with IPTV Fair Photo so we can see some of the awesome things you've visited at the fair this year. Thanks for the hashtag.
Oh my, I've had an incredible time bringing you these highlights during this program. And I'm even more excited to bring you even more coverage tomorrow night. But I know it can be tough to wait. So between now and then, visit IPTV.org to catch a feature you may have missed or share your own fond fair memories when you join our social media conversations. Tomorrow night, we'll watch some youngsters power through one of the more popular kids' contests. We'll see some impressive showmanship at the 4-H Sheep Show. And we'll enjoy music from one of our own, Iowa and Bonnie Finken, plus a whole lot more. This is a treasured time of year for us here at Iowa Public Television. It's fair time, and thanks so much for celebrating it with us here during our highlight show. Until tomorrow night, I'm Bill Riley. Have fun at the fair. Funding for FAIR 2015 is brought to you by Friends, the Iowa Public Television Foundation. Mid-American Energy Company and its Energy Advantage program are dedicated to increasing the awareness of energy efficiency in Iowa's homes and businesses. Information is at midamericanenergy.com. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Iowa Community Foundations, an Iowa Council of Foundations initiative. Giving through local community foundations is rewarding in more ways than one. Details about the Endow Iowa Tax Credit Program are at iowacommunityfoundations.org. The Iowa Lottery. Each year, the Iowa Lottery provides millions of dollars to finance vital state programs, including education, natural resources, family services, and economic development. The Iowa Lottery. Fun for you. Funds for our state. Through more than 100 years of changing times, EMC Insurance has been committed to the promise it makes to its employees, customers, agents, and communities. Count on EMC.